this question is on housing and it's clear that there's a lot of homelessness in Greater Manchester and this is clearly an important issue. So what's your short term and long term strategy to prevent and tackle homelessness? So the short term <clears throat> solution is already there. Um, and, and I have to give our current mayor a bit of credence on that. Um, you know, the bed for the night is simply that. It's a bed for the night. Um, and um, with the, I think they're looking at um, placing in, oh, I want to say storage tanks and turning them into temporary uh, homes under the arches, which is great, um, but these are short-term measures. Long term, we uh, need to deal with homelessness and um, home affordability across Greater Manchester. Um, and that has a lot of facets to it. So it's why is why why is someone homeless? And and it's not just one thing or another. So there could be mental health issues. There could be substance uh, and alcohol abuse within that. There could be financial problems. Um, there could be abuse issues in that person's history. Um, and we need to be able to tackle all of that and actually help that individual through whatever issue they're having that is causing their homelessness. Um, so I do, I do propose a, a collaborative approach more so than we have at the moment. Um, and it starts in communities and and it's linked to at the moment we're promised a, a police officer for every uh, ward in Greater Manchester in Greater Manchester um, which is great that's being rolled out what I want to see is you've got those police officers in each ward so in Trafford where I am I live in Stretford uh, and I live in Gorse Hill Ward in Stretford so we've got Longford, Gorse Hill and Stretford wards that make up Stretford and part of Longford is also in uh, Old Trafford uh, with Clifford Ward in Old Trafford. <clears throat> but those three wards or four wards that make up this side um, will have four police officers. So why can't they all have um, two or three youth workers? Why can't they all have a designated mental health community nurse? Why can't they all have um, a designated outreach worker or a designated social worker to work alongside um, housing association officers, to work alongside head teachers and, and primary school teachers and secondary school teachers and colleges to actually build a safety net within our communities. So instead of allowing someone to become homeless, because there's not the services there, we actually deal with the problem before it becomes bigger. Um, and that's a long-term solution that we could probably roll out over the next 10 years. It would mean lobbying government for extra money, but as, as you're probably aware, the uh, Mayor of Greater Manchester has influence and guidance uh, control over 6.3 billion pounds of health and social care funding for the city region. So actually using some of that to prevent the need for healthcare or prevention is better than cure. Homelessness was the big priority, my personal priority um, over the last four years. You know, I said at the first mayoral election that I would turn the situation around. We had a, a rising crisis of homelessness back in 2017 and we still do. I'm not saying for a second that we've solved it because it's obviously a big challenge. Let me separate the two things. The short term response, if you like, the, the emergency response that we've made, or I've made, is something called a bed every night. So this was a scheme that I created with our 10 councils. And we work with our community and voluntary providers across Greater Manchester. And I fund every single night about 520 places uh, currently. Um, so the aim is to give everybody sleeping rough somewhere to go. And it's really worked in that it's reduced rough sleeping. Um, there were 300 people sleeping rough in 2017. It's down, it varies because it does change, you know, from 
one month to another, but it's about 100 or a bit below 170 on the last count at the moment. So a bed every night has been independently evaluated by Heriot Watt University as having achieved a big, as, has having been the reason why we've reduced rough sleeping by so much. And they've also said that we've, we've gone faster than other parts of the country in reducing it because of that. But then let me just finish on the second part of your question, mm -hmm. uh, Georgia. That's an emergency response, a short-term response, and we do need a more comprehensive response. So we are currently developing a Greater Manchester Homelessness Prevention Strategy, which looks at the kind of much bigger, broader issues as to why um, people become uh, homeless uh, and what more is needed to be done to more than just give people a short-term solution, but actually give people a home. Um, so we um, will be bringing that forward in, in early May and it will go from building more homes for social rent, um, taking over the running of some homes within the private rented sector, expanding our successful housing first scheme, where we give people a home and support. Um, and it also touches on things like young people um, who've been in care, because that's a big part the homeless population, you know, young people who can't fall back on parents. Um, we, we need to do much more, I think, to prevent youth homelessness. So we have a particular pilot running at the moment on youth homelessness prevention, very much focused on young people who've been in care. Uh, and that will be a big part of our, of our overall strategy coming forward. So thank you for your question. Um, we are acting both short term and long term. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are beginning to re to achieve results, but we're not where we want to be yet. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the first thing is really to um, acknowledge that I'm not the expert in in this, and to um, to start meeting with those people who are. So those organisations and groups who do amazing work across our city region to actually work with people who find themselves homeless and to actually see what they are hearing and what they are advocating for. And to actually use the experts and again that's something I think that it's very easy for politicians to go this is my grand plan and then there's someone sat at the you know sat who's, who's spent hours and hours and days and weeks and months actually genuinely dealing with the problem on the street to go what is she on about what's that all about so I think that 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 would be you know sort of week one I would be inviting all of those um, charity leaders all of those um, workers all of those people are actually spending the time and really genuinely have the knowledge to come in and to have a sort of sit down and a, a conference with me to sort of say, where, where do we need the extra support and where can I actually add value to this? Where is the, what, what do you need? What's really working well? Um, and one of the things I've heard from some of the homeless charities is there has been a, a move to do more work, joined up working together across, the, across issues and regions. Actually, that's that is what we need. Um, but also looking to say, where is it an appropriate place for charities um, and voluntary organisations to have a have a role? But also, where can we then use money from Greater Manchester to actually replace some of those? Um, and that isn't to do a disservice to those organisations, but to say this is a problem that affects all of us as a society. We should, should we really be reliant on charities and volunteers to fix it? Or should it be what's working well, what's appropriate to stay there and what then comes much more directly under the mayoral control? Mm -hmm.